Fox News senior strategic analyst, retired four-star general Jack Keane. Uh, general, so much to talk about uh, with each passing hour. We're sure. learning a lot more here. Let's start with the military situation. You just heard Lucas talking about the troops. Uh, they're sleeping on the floor at the Afghan airport with whatever they basically had on their backs. How do you think this is going today? Well, there are some improvements uh, because they got some throughput, uh, more aircraft, more people getting out of the country. It appears, though, there's huge impediments and obstacles still out there. I think we had a very awkward moment in, in the press conference that you highlighted here yesterday with Secretary Austin and General Milley when the question was asked, would you be willing to go outside of the airport and remove those obstacles and impediments so the people could throughput through? And they obviously don't have any authorization to do that, nor do they have any authorization to, to increase resources or possibly open up another airfield. So that was a very awkward moment. And I, I'm hopeful that they, this team, this national security team, is, has come together and gotten the president's authority. He seemed to imply in the interview um, with uh, George Stephanopoulos, it's like he made the decision right in front of George Stephanopoulos. He was probing him on the date certain. If there's people still here after 31 August, um, what are you going to do? And uh, he kept pushing him, and he seemed to say, well, we'll make certain we get them out. Yeah. So, it, it, but obviously, as of yesterday, they didn't have that decision. Uh, they may still not have that decision. So this should be a conditions-based evacuation. And what do I mean by that? One, you make a declaration, the president makes the declaration to his own people and to the Taliban that we're going to stay here as long as it takes to get everybody out that needs to get out, period. The second thing is, authorize the Pentagon. I want you to use all the resources that you have available to do what you need to do to make this of action go faster and make it go safer. And if you have to move outside the airport and use, establish safe corridors, you have to use, uh, establish pickup hubs for people to gather so you can pick them up there. If you have to open up another airfield, just let me know what it is you're going to do, but you have the authority to do it. Because if you need the resources to facilitate the conditions-based evacuation, you got them. Use the resources that you need and give them carte blanche to do that. I don't believe that has happened yet. It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like it. And that should have happened day one. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like it. I thought it was very interesting when, when John Kirby was asked about changing the deadline today. He said if there's a decision to change the deadline, additional conversations with the Taliban would, would be had. Uh, so, in other words, we're going to have to basically establish um, some kind of open uh, communication with them in order to say, gee, we might be here a little bit longer than August 31st, and is that going to be okay with you? Also, I didn't hear anything from President Biden today in that interview that suggested that he wants to go outside the airport. Um, and I would just sort of, you know, bring everybody's attention back to something that he said um, in, in a book that was written by Richard Holbrook when they were talking about leaving Afghanistan and the way that he felt about the obligation that we had to the Afghan people. Um, he used some pretty salty language. He said, F that. We don't have to worry about that. We did it in Vietnam. Nixon and Kiss Kissinger got away with it. Yeah, I, I think it's sad to say I don't like making this comment, but I, I, I do believe there's a bit of a callous indifference that uh, President Biden has when it comes to the Afghan people and, um, and, and a lack of a moral compass and empathy for this suffering that's taken place here. And the obligation, we were fighting side by side here against radical Islam. We were here because America was attacked. The Taliban is complicit in being the host for the al-Qaeda who attacked us. And the, and the Afghans have sacrificed 66,000 soldiers, over 50,000 civilians in this fight alongside of us. They are our allies in this fight. And there's all sorts of issues there, as we know, in terms of how things could have been better and mistakes that were made. But there's no denying the fact that for 20 years they stood up against this radical Islamic movement for their own self-interest, but also for the security of the American people and our NATO allies. And for some reason, he hasn't been able to embrace that. He made a flippant statement in 1975 dealing with the South Vietnamese. And he said, we have no obligation to evacuate one or 100,000 in one South Vietnamese. I mean, that is a terrible statement. Truth is, we, his predecessors evacuated over 100,000 of them. 
you know, is he is he reading the polls? Is he assessing this kind of number from the AP poll today? Two thirds of Americans say Afghanistan, the Afghanistan war was not worth fighting. Um, maybe he's just looking at that and saying, you know what, let's get out. Everybody will forget about this in a few months. Um, is that is that what you think is happening? I don't know. I don't know what his motivation is. I mean, when it comes to polling on Afghanistan, I understand the polling. 20 years is a long time. If you asked a person a question, do you think it's worthwhile to keep a couple of thousand American troops in Afghanistan to continue to protect the American people so they don't get attacked again? I think you'd get a different answer. Yeah. But I'll leave that. I'm not an, not an expert. And I don't know what his, what his motivation is when it, when it comes to this. But listen, this, this is... This has been one of the worst foreign policy episodes of my lifetime. I mean, we have done real damage to the image of the United States in this world. And there's gonna, it, 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 it's going to be consequential for years to come. Remember, President Biden embraced the strategic objective of working with our allies right. as, a, as sort of a, a seminal objective of his. And what has he done? So our audience understands, we were going to leave 2,500. Our NATO partners are going to leave close to 8,000. And they wanted to leave the 8,000. We were the ones that were attacked on 9-11, not the Europeans. But they believed it was in their national interest to protect their citizens from the radicals in Afghanistan. And they wanted to stay. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.